younger brother, sisters, and elder brother, sisters. Indeed, I feel very happy mixing with people, and particularly young people. When I, you see, I sit with old people, then sometimes I feel, you go first, me go first. <laughs> then when I mixing with young people, 85 year old person mentally sometimes feel younger. So I'm very happy, very enjoy meeting with you. Then time always moving. So no force can stop that. Time moving, changing, it's nature. Now the question is whether we uh, utilize time properly or not. And for that, it's the past, we can't do anything. But the future, depend on present. So, so we can make uh, opportunity uh, to create future more peaceful, more happy, or difficult future. Now in that respect, the generation of 21st century. You are the key sort of people who uh, create this century, more happier century or difficult century. So the generation of 21st century, you have the opportunity and also responsibility. And also the, the remaining 21st century, the, like me, we won't see, but you have to live. So therefore, say, it is your own interest uh, to try to have happier, century. So the generation of 21st century is very, very important. So please, these young brothers, sisters, please think more seriously how to build happy world, happy century. Because, you know, a lot of problems which we are experiencing and seeing, including war, these are human creation. So, uh, since these problems, many problems, human created problems, so logically, we also have the ability to eliminate this problem. If not entirely, certainly we can reduce this problem. So the young uh, human being, you have a very good opportunity and also moral responsibility to create happier world. So now, the, like this, violence, war, 
mainly create creation of anger and and also selfish and narrow minded if we create on this world a concept of oneness of human being no basis of we and the day then you see this uh such as sort of uh, cruelty and war too much based on we and they and that also finally concept of i i we lacking a sense of oneness of seven billion human being if we consider entire seven billion human being as human brother sisters then we see no basis to kill each other uh, to bully each other therefore now it is very important we need have to develop sense of oneness of human human being and the logically you see human being a social animal uh, and then any social animal they have the sense of concern about their own community because their own life very much depend on the community so ancient time community you see his or her own area firstly family then small community now today's world the reality uh, the eastern world depend on western world or this technology or this so the modern so science or this come from west we very much rely on them then also for economy these things west also is in need depend on the east and similarly south and north so from that judging that reality then today's human community uh seems entire seven billion human being is one human community so uh we buddhist usually you see uh recite this is some sort of prayer entire sentient being and we discuss mother sentient being uh and then also you see the other religion like judo christian tradition and muslim those theistic religion who believe god so from that view point also you see entire world created by one god so that god something like our father so all seven being human being are children of one father god so judging from that but and our seven being human beings are brothers sisters so these theistic religion except creator god very powerful and god uh, everybody you see ex- ex- because of the consider god infinite love so our father uh, one god is infinite love so we all seven billion human being are children of that god so if you think seriously how can human being kill each other bully each other we have to live side by side with spirit of brotherhood sisterhood then as i briefly mentioned according non-theistic religion 
呃呃商家，呃 one part of 商家 ，no concept of creator， and then Jainism， no concept of creator， and then Buddhism， no concept of creator， 呃、uh, ，but then， 呃、uh,。The main sort of message、uh, is ahimsa and karuna. So in this country, over three thousand years, the concept of ahimsa and karuna. So when you seriously practice ahimsa. Then no basis to attack, to harm other. So no basis of war, violence, and all these ahimsa concept related with karuna. So when you have, when when you sort of follow the teaching of these ancient Indian、uh, teachers, ahimsa and karuna. Then automatically, you see that person become very peaceful, very compassionate, and a sensible person. I think India, comparatively、uh, today, India most peaceful. And then the religious harmony because of ahimsa, concept of ahimsa. Different religious tradition, homegrown different religion, and religion come from、uh, outside. That is mainly Judeo-Christian and Islam, and the Zoroastrian. These come from outside, but you see, remain here、uh, peaceful and religious harmony in this country, truly. Really remarkable. So, in our neighbor country, the, due to different religious faith killing each other, in this country, religious harmony marvelous. So, therefore,、uh, India, the thousand-year-old concept of ahimsa and karuna, is very much. Relevant today's world, and then again, India's tradition, secular way. You see,、uh, whether believer or non-believer, believe this religion or that religion is personal matter. As a human being, you see, we need practice of ahimsa and karuna. So among the Egyptian civilization, Chinese civilization, Indus Valley's civilization, which is India's original,、uh, so you see this Indus Valley's civilization. I think、uh, the main sort of concept, as I mentioned earlier,、uh, non-violence and compassion. And that also, you see, according secular way, then today、uh, it is really very much relevant today's world.、Uh, since the secular way approach these things, so through education, not through prayer, not through religious belief. Religious belief is individual matter, individual business. But this concept of peace, compassion, is relevant to entire humanity. So now, the, I often used to express the thousand-year-old Indian tradition, ahimsa,、uh, karuna, through education.、Uh, say, firstly, in this country. Should revive 
in the education field. Not only education, which exists today, is very much uh, oriented about material value. Uh, basically, existing modern education comes from the West. So in the West, Judo Christian tradition, so uh, they are sort of whenever some problem, uh, some difficult phase, just pray God, God, God. No sort of education or knowledge how to tackle our emotion, our mind. So now this country, uh, before Buddha, before Mahavira, uh, already have the concept of ahimsa and compassion, karuna. So now, uh, of course now, a lot of people here, so I may mention, I have uh, four sort of commitment or responsibility. Number one, I consider I am just one human being on this planet. So now even scientists say uh, basic human nature is more compassionate because we are social animal. Any social animal, they are, as I briefly mentioned, uh, they are sort of uh, life very much depend on the community. So therefore, uh, basic human nature is more compassionate. Now that's uh, some scientists now thinking that way. So that should be basis uh, we can develop compassionate human being through now through education. So these days, I telling, I expressing the in kindergarten level, the teaching or education, or how to take care of your physical health. So similar, same time, we should include hygiene of emotion. Hygiene of physical, hygiene of emotion. So children also, do you, you see, do you prefer a smile or like this kind of face? Uh, so naturally, smile, uh, indication or expression of loving kindness. So when I was young, like, like you, is when my teacher showing a little bit of sort of serious face, I don't like. <laughs> uh, when my teacher, you see, make some jokes and some sort of smile, then I do not feel tiredness. If more serious face, then I look, watch, uh, as soon as finish this, this, that lesson, I feel much happier. I prefer like that. So therefore, uh, young children, since we love smile, warm-heartedness, so now education should include uh, about hygiene of emotion and how to create happy mind, peaceful mind. So my number one commitment is try to create seven billion human beings, uh, more compassionate human being. For individual physical health also, now these days, some scientists also now mention peace of mind very important for 
healthy for for health, healthy body, and uh, the longevity survey, longevity. Uh, long life. So therefore, now not talking about next life, not talking about Buddha or God or heaven. Simply, how to be happier human being, human society. So through education, we should include education about our emotion, how to tackle anger, uh, fear, jealousy. These emotions are destroyer of peace of mind and eventually also destroy our health. Therefore, uh, you see, in our education should include more or say, the explanation, more sort of sort of, uh, more education about our emotion, about our mind. In that respect, in this country, very, very rich material about uh, mind, emotion. Usually I describe something like map of emotion. Mm -hmm. Once we uh, fully sort of uh, understand, understand right, or knowledge, then much easier to tackle this emotion as a secular way. So these you see, things uh, mentioned in religious text. Now he, here, you see, according to my own sort of uh, little experience, a lot of explanation in this Buddhist text about psychology. But then this should consider as an academic subject, not a religious subject, according to Indian tradition, secular way. So, number one, my commitment is try to promote a compassionate mind or loving kindness, or loving kindness or through education in the whole world. As I am once one person uh, out of seven billion human beings, wherever I go, I always talk these things. Number one. Number two, my commitment is try to promote religious harmony, as I mentioned earlier. I have full sort of confidence religious harmony is very possible. This country, as I mentioned earlier, all world religious traditions live together. Uh, and mutual respect. And in some cases, mutual learning. I often use mentioning the Parsi community in Bombay, less than 100,000. They are uh, Kasai. Zorazuddin. Uh, Zorazuddin. He's come from outside India and then settled in Bombay. They carry some fire puja or something. In big city, over a million, I think several million Christian, Hindu, uh, Muslim, less than 100,000 population, Parsi, very happily, no fear. So, uh, that's one example in this country. I think religious harmony is truly exist over a thousand years. So, uh, I have full sort of conviction religious harmony is very possible. Uh, so, my number two commitment, I'm wherever I go, I always try to uh, share with people all religion, in spite of different I mean, philosophy, a different teacher at different time, but all carry message of love. 
and with that forgiveness, tolerance, self-discipline. So all major religions, uh, in spite of different philosophy, the main message is the same. Therefore, and that also is logically, all these religion, except you see, according to the creator, then different. Otherwise, it's all these religion human created. So human naturally, the human good quality, best quality is human love. So all religion, which essentially created by human being, they uh, carry the, I mean the the concept of loving kindness, taking care of other, not harming other. So that all religion, all human being, carry this message. And then, you see, uh, mentioned different philosophy, it is necessary according different people, different mental disposition, uh, even if in different geography, different climate, you need different way of approach. The goal, aim is same, loving kindness, compassion, like that. So religious harmony, very possible. Uh, otherwise, it's just India's neighbor, Afghanistan. And then the Arab world, uh, in the name of religion, killing each other, unthinkable, really. So therefore, the religious harmony, uh, very important. So it is possible to create religious harmony. India is the example. Okay. Then, number three commitment, I am Tibetan. Tibetan people trust me. So I have more responsibility uh, to think about their future. So political matter, now already I retired since 2001. I completely retired from political responsibility. Uh, then we already have elected political leadership. Uh, then uh, regarding Tibet, ecology. Now global warming really become more serious. So many experts about ecology, they really uh, warning us. Uh, so Tibet case, according to some Indian uh, ecologists, they say the Tibet high altitude and dry climate. So like ecology, these once damage, it take longer time to Kasoda. Kasoda. Recover. Recover. So uh, ecology condition in Tibet is quite delicate. So I often use expressing uh, the concerned people there, and particularly Chinese, uh, including Chinese business uh, people. See, they, I mean, exploitation about the major resources there. Hmm? This, this should should take care. Uh, yes, it, it is worthwhile to use natural resources, but forests, these things, they should pay more attention. This is my regarding Tibet. And then most important is Tibetan knowledge. Uh, from childhood, uh, I study these uh, texts which originally translated from Sanskrit. So, hmm, uh, when I was like you, I quite lazy. <laughs> then, you see, when you see, I, I kazo, kazo da, counting. Now, when holiday come, wah. so the next day holiday. Then today I feel very happy. <laughs> I think you also have same feeling, isn't it? <laughs> so. 
still, I'm quite lazy, but those uh, subjects which I learned, they also the, the, the traditional way to uh, study these things. Firstly, root text, learn by heart, memorize. Few hundred pages, memorize. Then explain each word uh, according commentary, mainly Indian master's commentary. Then we extensively use debate because Shanta Rakshita, who are introducing uh, Buddhism in Tibet in the 8th century, he himself great logician. So therefore, you see, he introduced Buddha Dharma in Tibet according to uh, Nalanda tradition, his style. Logical approach is very essential. Uh, so now, the Tibetan also the uh, knowledge, not only just uh, prayer, prayer or religious belief, religious or ritual, but logic and uh, philosophy. The Nalanda philosophy, now very much, you see, the similar quantum physics, quantum physics half. The Nalanda sort of also the, uh, now quantum physicists, you see, they already develop things outside, external things does not exist as appears. If you analyze, nothing uh, you can find. So quite similar, the Chitta Mantra's concept, external thing does not exist, only uh, mental Hasoda, creation story, like that, Ka, mental projection. Mental projection. Then, uh, so quantum physicists, they say uh, there is huge gap, appearance and reality. The reality does not exist as appears. This is exactly the Nalanda philosopher, exactly she mentioned these things. So I want to share with uh, young brothers, sisters, you know, when I listen, quantum physicist, uh, naturally, I, uh, with respect and uh, humbly, listen their explanation. Meantime, in my mind, I feel I know much better. <laughs> <laughs> because we study, yes, yes, about the Nalanda tradition, Chitta Mantra philosophy, as well as Madhimika philosophy. Within Madhimika, there are some Madhimika philosophers also, you see, accept the Chitta Mantras, mind only school, uh, school thought. Uh, and then the uh, Prasankika, Madhimika, wonderful. Now, the uh, similar quantum physics, nothing exist as it appears. So mention these things because our destructive emotion very much based on appearances. You convince things exist as it appears and some nice thing, attachment, some negative thing, anger. So now some student uh, in, in China, about quantum physics. Now they uh, express, so once they believe nothing exists as appears, that automatically reduces the grasping, something independent existence there. That's the basis of and all these negative emotion. So therefore, the uh, quantum physics, uh, not only external thing, but observer also, you see, through centuries investigation, where is I? Uh, 
that's observer. So uh, there is no independent I. Uh, now here differences, atma theory and anatma theory, uh, like that. So therefore, uh, uh, Tibetan uh, tradition, uh, some Chinese professors who uh, who notice you see, these things, they express Tibetan Buddhism is true lineage of Nalanda tradition, and that tradition is very scientific religion. Some Chinese professors, you see, uh, express that way. So therefore, the Tibetan knowledge, uh, I think, very useful to preserve. So it can make, I think, certain contribution regarding uh, our sort of knowledge about inner world. Uh, then uh, that's mainly regarding the Tibet, the Kasoda. Oh. And then political matter, as I mentioned earlier, already we have all elected political leadership. And since 57, no, correct, 74, 74, according to Nehru's advice and also according to our own experience, uh, then we are not seeking independence or separation from China. We are very much sort of, uh, sort of willing to remain within the people's world of China. And then, uh, Important is Tibetan knowledge must preserve, and including Tibetan language should be preserved. And uh, when we say Tibet, they, in 1914, similar convention, we say, make distinction, inner Tibet, outer Tibet. Uh, so independence for Tibet, out of Tibet, inner Tibet, Amdo, Kham, these are, they consider inner Tibet as a part of China. So if we only concern outer Tibet, then around uh, less than two, two millions, two millions. Uh, then including the outer Tibet, no, inner Tibet, Kham, Amdo, then altogether about six to seven millions. So we are sort of concerning, we are concerned uh, all those Tibetan which Chinese constitution recognize as a Tibetan sort of race should have same right to preserve their thousand year old knowledge and including that language. So uh, that's the political field. You see, we are not seeking independence, uh, but we should preserve Tibetan ecology and rich Tibetan culture. Now today, I think ancient uh, Nalanda knowledge, now in India, you see, all these knowledge disappear. Uh, so only among Tibetan, we still kept all these Nalanda thought, Nalanda knowledge about psychology, about logic, about, you see these, like quantum physics, these things. We still, in our tradition, very much alive and also very useful to tackle our emotion. So this uh, knowledge in order to keep peace of mind, not just a blind faith, but analyt through analytical meditation. What's the value of anger? What's the value of selfish? Ultimately, all these negative emotions related with selfish. So the great master like Shanta, uh, Shanta Deva, 
or their writing or Kaza. Shinju Kaza. A guide to the Bodhisattva huh? way of life. Really wonderful to tackle self centered attitude and uh, create altruism. So thinking other actually benefit yourself maximum way. So since many years I use the word we are selfish as a human being. Whole evolution oh, come with take care of oneself, including animals. But now since we have this human brain, so our selfish should be wise selfish rather than foolish selfish. So wise selfish means since we are social animal, our individual life depends on the community. So take care maximum way about others' well being. That's the best way to fulfill your selfish sort of interest. Like that. So uh the Shandarakshita Firstly, Shandarakshita introduced uh, Buddha Dharma in Tibet in the 8th century. And he himself, logical, I'm a logician. So, the, our sort of approach, anything, uh, so all, the first our reaction is why? The sort of, what's the question mark? Why, why, why? Even Buddha's own word, why we, he taught that. So, uh, some Nalanda master, you see, rejected some Buddha's own teaching. If you accept this literally, uh, it goes against reason. So, we must reject. Like Nagarjuna, uh, Chandrakirti, uh, they clearly mentioned that. So Buddha himself, I think, allowed us, uh, all my followers, uh, monks, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So many Nalanda masters exactly follow that way. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, see, Nalanda tradition, Buddhist uh, tradition, non-tradition, much sort of also emphasis on logical approach. So Buddhism as Chinese, as I mentioned earlier, described as a, a scientific religion. And my own experience, uh, around, I think about 40 years, I have serious discussion with modern scientists. You see, eventually, uh, it become very useful to middle learning. We also, you see, learn something from scientific sort of finding. And then they also, you see, very much appreciate about our knowledge, our mind, about how to tackle this destructive emotion like that. So that's regarding Tibet. And then my uh, latest commitment is try to uh, revival of ancient Indian knowledge about Ahimsa, Karuna, and the Vipassana, analytical meditation. This is India's tradition. Now, modern India, I think, not sufficient to pay attention about this knowledge. Your modern Indian, very much sort of, as the Kasoda, of the Kasoda follow, the materialistic education. Now, time come you should pay more attention about ancient Indian knowledge, about mind, about emotion. Then, uh, the logically, India is the only nation who can combine modern education that uh, oriented about material value and science and technology is very useful. And then, meantime, ancient Indian knowledge tackle our mind to build inner uh, inner strength or inner, inner value. So only India can, uh, can do, combine ancient your knowledge and modern knowledge combined. 
modern knowledge bring us physical comfort ancient indian knowledge bring us mental comfort this i think in whether believe or non believe a secular way so i usually see make distinction these i i think i already mentioned you see these the yeah, knowledge we should consider as a academic uh, knowledge not religious knowledge although come from religious text but we should consider these are secular way and uh, about the sort of academic subject uh, so i am trying to revive of ancient indian uh as the knowledge india the young young indian now you should pay more attention about ancient indian knowledge about the mind or oh, ahimsa or oh, karuna these things uh, the young indian now should pay more attention and study so the secular education you should include education about mind as i mentioned earlier from childhood hygiene of emotion these things so that is my uh the latest to my commitment i am uh, i i really found number of indian scholars they really uh showing interest about my commitment revival of these ancient indian knowledge and combine ancient knowledge modern knowledge like that then india can make a significant uh, contribution regarding world peace peace through inner peace like that so now the text ka now the uh, today i am going to speak something about eight verses on the great uh, Tibetan as a monk or and also scholar the atishas as a disciple uh, and uh, as a day of potowa karam kuchisum potowa and potowa had a special memory langshani that they are the language that was at the congregation So the text that we are going to go through was written by um, a disciple of um, um, one of the disciples of the Potova, who was in turn a disciple of Master Atisha Dipankara Sri Jana, who came to Tibet. And uh, uh, this was this text was written uh, by a disciple uh, who was a disciple of Potova. I mean, um, uh, in. Uh, A disciple of Potova, mm-hmm. and so uh, regarding the disciple of Potova, they were the uh, two disciples mainly who were called. Um, Langshay. Ta. Langshay. Potova. Oh, Sharawata Langshay. Langshay is. And so uh, these two disciples were Sharawa and uh, then Langri Thangpa. So this text was written by Master Langri Thangpa. So he wrote this eight verses. He himself is a great practitioner of uh, altruism. So he wrote this very short, uh, something like prayer or some text. So I myself, since very young age, I recite this eight verses every day. So this is. quite short and very meaningful now the which is determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all certain beings which surpass even the wish fulfilling germ may i hold them dear at all times through analytical meditation see all sort of happiness and including long life and a physical health very much depend our attitude towards other 
So just think oneself. Then all these negative things, negative emotions, you see, come. Think more about others. You get for for sort of for, for immediate also peaceful mind. Uh, and then next life, no question. You practice altruism. Think other uh, more, and then. 100% sure your next life will be a human being and a happy life. Then practice that. Uh, so every moment your action uh, motivated altruism, then every sort of karma action become positive. So, Jeremy uh, uh, Sempty tells or lamty shunshinti, lamty jabber, and the shit at day, Tony Gonna send you to the Ramsar Kesot, the Sonam de Tedrashen, a Kesa Bonum, register to the Tidunzi, Nanjo Nagan Yam de Tedrash, Tanjit Sansa, that is a Shivuji Nanshu, Pendle, Pensho Shivuja. Sempty Sampo said him. So, as Master John Kappa has said, um, this uh, altruistic spirit of enlightenment is the um, is like the yardstick of uh, the um, the great vehicle tradition, and it is also um, the basis of all the great uh, bodhisattva practices. And therefore, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, practitioners bodhisattvas make this practice of bodhicitta their uh, principal practice. So uh, this shows how um, great uh, the, the altruism and the, the concerning with, um, with the concern for the well-being of all other sentient beings is very uh, important and significant. Then, may I hold them dear at all times. Now, this also related with uh, ultimate reality. Now may I hold, where is I? Beside this body and mind and voice, where is I? <laughs> so if we investigate, we can't find. Recently, I met uh, among the sort of audience one old lady. Uh, she ex She's seeking some kind of blessing from me uh, because her mind so too much sort of anxiety or sort of disturbed. disturbed. Then I ask I ask I ask her, where is self? Where is I? Where is you? Uh, she responds, here, here, I here. Then I ask round or square, as she answered round. <laughs> so, you know, investigate, where is I? We cannot sort of find the real sort of basis of I. So, the anatma theory is essentially, ultimately, we cannot find even if the quantum physics is as like external thing, observer himself or herself investigate beside his body, mind, a voice, nothing we can pinpoint. So, uh, as the Kasa Chandakriti, daughter was at the and so if you um, uh, try to search for your uh, true identity, 
uh, you cannot find anything that you can actually pinpoint as being yourself. You cannot find, uh, find this I that you usually hold on to um, and be existing as uh, uh, something concrete or something like that. As Master Chandrakirti has said, uh, when you actually um, you know, analyze through the, uh, the sevenfold reasoning, uh, like uh, analyzing a chariot, um, you will not be able to find anything that you actually can pinpoint as being the I, the self. But uh, that, uh, 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 despite that, um, you do exist, the I or the person does exist by way of, merely by way of convention. Um, the, the worldly convention. And so um, we should understand that things are merely designated and that they, they are known by um, worldly conventions. And so, um, as we say, um, logically, um, we cannot actually have anything that is um, a standalone kind of an, an entity. Um, whatever there is, I mean, there is always some kind of a part. A, we, we can talk about a whole. When, I, when we talk about a whole, there's always uh, the, the, the constituent factors that make up the whole. And so, um, when you try to you know, search for the identity of the things, um, you need to actually dissect the thing into its parts and further into the subparts and so forth. When you do this, then there's nothing that you can actually find as being this or that. Then, whenever I interact with someone, may I view myself as the lowest amongst them. And from that very depth of my heart, respectfully hold others as superior. So in order to tackle self-centered attitude, using these practice, very, very helpful. And the reality, uh, if the circumstances, if someone take, you remain humble, sincerely, then if someone take advantage, then analyze whether let uh, the other take advantage uh, and what result, what consequences analyze. Then, uh, if circumstances and through analytical meditation analyze, then uh, eventually, you see the Kasoda, Kanda, the other person, himself or herself, you see, uh, may, uh, may get more suffering, uh, more committed negative karma. Then, according to their circumstances, if necessary, to countermeasure, to stop their or should they wrongdoing like that. Then in all my deeds, may I prove into my mind and as soon as mental and emotional affliction arise, as they endanger myself and others, may I strongly confront them and avert them. So as I already mentioned, the anal analytical meditation, we should develop clear understanding what kind of emotion is harmful, what kind of emotion is uh, useful. Then uh, everyone, you see, uh, caring themselves. So all this negative emotion is ultimate destruction, the destroyer of your own happiness, your own peace of mind, like that, as I already mentioned. Uh, when I see beings of unpleasant character, right? No. oppressed by strong negativity and suffering. May I hold them dear, uh, for they are rare to find, as I have discovered a jewel, a treasure.
So as a result of practice of altruism, then it's genuine concern of our so-called enemy, troublemaker, that uh, sense of concern is genuine compassion. A sense of concern of your own friend uh, is more mixed with attachment. So the uh, the way the, the, the proper way to test your own genuine compassion, really genuine or not, is to look towards your enemy. Uh, the genuine sense of concern of their well-being, that is genuine compassion. Okay. Uh, so, as Shantadawa say, enemy who creates trouble for you is best teacher. It's true. Like that. Uh, when others, out of jealousy, treat me wrongly with abuse, slander, and scorn, may I take them myself, uh, the defeat, and offer to others the victory. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Few years ago, you see some uh, uh, intrepid. Some sort of local variety. Yeah, don't get. Ah. 2008. 2008. Yeah. Oh. Some people in Lhasa uh, start demonstration. And then suppression. Oh. So at that time, I visualized some of those Chinese officials who making that, that kind of decision. I visualized and take their anger. Their fear, take myself. Give them forgiveness or tolerance or compassion. That kind of sort of visualization. Uh, so no help to actual the situation, but it immense help to keep peace of mind. Like that. So then, as a sort of practitioner, uh, altruism, then the whole phenomena appears something very positive. Uh, too much self-centered sort of thinking. Uh, then whole phenomena appears something negative, and fear, distrust, suspicion. So sometimes I, uh, as a practice practitioner of altruism, now at least, I think, 50 years, more than 50 years, hmm? with a combination of understanding of Shunyata, about now 60 years, 60, 70 years. So, uh, sometimes when I saw some wrathful deity, I feel a little strange uh, to whom their wrathful sort of face. The all phenomena, hmm? all sort of sentient beings, very dear. Uh, just so when I see these wrathful and paintings of wrathful deities, I sometimes uh, think, to whom actually are they showing their wrath? Um, in fact, when I see these uh, 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 portraits of the wrathful deities, I also feel that uh, what uh, Master Shandideva has prayed is actually true, uh, which says in the third chapter, at the, at the end of the third chapter, today I... Um, uh, called in the, in, in, the, in front of the protectors, the Buddhas, and um, the, I call upon all sentient beings as my guests 
for the uh, ultimate realization of um, Buddhahood, and in the meantime, also um, for the, um, the temporary um, called, uh, benefit within the uh, called, uh, existential existence and um, uh, cyclic existence. And therefore, with this prayer, I actually uh, pray that may the gods and non gods, and demigods, and so forth um, be joyful. When I give some uh, tantric sort of uh, city, uh, asa. Initiations. Uh, initiation. Uh, usually at the beginning, you see, some part, uh, also they expel all negative forces. Uh, since now, some few years, I no longer practice that. There's nothing. Pia, Tata Kekshin, Pia Kakem Dua. So um, in this uh, kind of a tantric uh, rituals, um, I mean, uh, when we come to the point of doing this uh, called ritual, to the, this, uh, we, we, where we imagine to you know dispel or drive away the so-called evil forces, I actually think that there's nobody, uh, no sentient being whom we could call as being our enemies or adversaries. Everyone is our friends. <laughs> So in fact, these so-called evil beings whom we think of them driving away during these kind of ceremonies are our objects of compassion. And therefore, we should not think of them as some kind of a, you know, adversary who are harming us or anything like that, but be compassionate towards them. In brief, may I offer benefit and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly. May I quietly take upon myself all hurts and pains of my mother. Hmm? May all this remain kasa. Un undefined. undefined. Where? No. Huh? By the strains of eight mountain concerns, huh? and may I recognize all this as illusion, devoid of kasa. Clinging. Ka. Clinging. Clinging. No. Be released from bondage. That really uh, at the beginning, I or that now investigate where is I. Hmm. It is more easier. Kansa time, the Chuji time, Tungi Tamuka and Shabi, the Taraski, or Matine, Tungi Shushing, Kansa time, it was a lot of chat decks or store. I, I said, but then a little of shoe store. Chesagaini, my change. Chingarangi Sensi So, um, when we, um, uh, with regard to this last verse, when you come to say, may I recognize all things as like illusion and so forth, um, you should uh, try to relate uh, this verse with the analysis into 
who you are. As uh, I have already explained with regard, uh, in relation to verse number two, uh, when we say, whenever I interact with somebody, you should do analysis of who you are and try to see I mean, um, uh, whether you can find this so-called I or me I mean, within this psychophysical, from within this psychophysical aggregate or not. And so, um, when you do this kind of analysis, I mean, we actually try, um, what we try to um, call, uh, ga gain insight into in, is twofold. One is the, uh, the what is called the, the uh, selflessness of persons or beings and selflessness of phenomena. And uh, the, the, between these two, selflessness of phenomena, uh, the, the, the selflessness of person and phenomena, uh, it's easier to gain insight into the selflessness of uh, person. Um, and, uh, called, um, but then, with, uh, within the Buddhist philosophical tradition, uh, there are those schools who kind of assert that there must be something that we can actually point our finger at, that, that we can actually identify as the real, the true nature or the true identity of a person as such. And therefore, um, uh, they, uh, call, uh, they uh, kind of uh, uh, assert um, that uh, within the, uh, from amongst the psychophysical aggregates, the five aggregates as we call them, um, what can actually be called, uh, uh, identified as the, the true identity of a being or a person is the mental con consciousness. And then within that, uh, called, uh, while uh, called, uh, the, within that, there's some schools like uh, Chidamatrins um, kind of desperately assert a so called alaya vijana, foundational consciousness, as being the true identity of a person or a being. And then there are those of the Madhyamaka philosophical tradition, um, uh, followers of Madhyamaka philosophical tradition, particularly the Savatantrika Madhyamakas, who say that the sixth consciousness, the sixth mind, is is the true identity of a person. But even though they do assert such things like the Alaya Vijana or the Sixth Consciousness as being the true identity of a person, when you actually put these two um, under the lens of you know, a critical analysis, you will not be able to find anything as being the person as such. Whether it's Alaya Vijana or the Sixth Consciousness, nothing can be found. When you do that kind of analysis, critical analysis, analysis in, uh, to look into the nature of the I or the person, what you f actually get at is that, you know, this empty nature of you know, yourself. And there is this, uh, this sense of um, you call a vacuity that you may get into. And then we call, um, what you actually f uh, can uh, come to conclusion is a person yourself, when you analyze yourself, you, you cannot actually find anything that you can actually pin, pinpoint as being your identity as such from amongst the, um, the, uh, the five psychophysical aggregates. Nothing can be found as being the person as such. And therefore, what you actually uh, can conclude is that this me or the I is merely designated. That, uh, that it's um, called uh, merely designated by way of worldly convention and nothing else. So this practice actually is a tackle or sort of emotion, destructive emotion. Firstly, self-centered, selfish is the key factor, uh, key sort of factor, all those destructive emotions. For that, antidote is bodhicitta, altruism. Then, uh, another sort of wrong view, everything ex exists uh, as appears. Uh, antidote of that, uh, nothing independently ex exists. All are just a mere designated. So then, analytical meditation about shunyata, is the antidote of Tenzing. Yes. So the understanding that things have no independent existence, that they don't exist the way they appear to us, um, is the kind of counterforce or the antidote to this grasping or clanking at some kind of a concrete self. So my daily practice, mainly these two things, Buddhijita 
and analytical meditation for shunyata, immense help in order to keep peace of mind. And when come across some uh, problems, uh, so these two practices really immense benefit. So, uh, so thank you. So I really appreciate you give me this opportunity, you organize this op cause opportunity. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Your Holiness, there are some questions from the students already. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what should we as students practice first, compassion or wisdom? I think wisdom you need more study. So I think gradually come. Uh, re remain more warm-hearted person. Uh, so that's practice of uh, altruism. Mm -hmm. So firstly, uh, I think you should uh, practice thousand-year-old Indian tradition, Ahimsa, Karuna. Next. How do you um, view yourself? Hmm? How do you view yourself? Just a human being on Amdo. <laughs> Amdo human being. <laughs> how do you handle exam pressure? Hmm? How, how, do we, how do we handle exam pressure? Huh? When I carry some or so the examination, the finally a Kishi's examination. Yes, little kaso, kaso anxiety. anxiety but mm, it's basically, uh, I think, thirteen years I study, and then when you see the date of my examination finalized. Then I put more effort for study. Uh, so not much, what's the, uh, not much worry. Okay. Uh, how can we, as a student, attain eternal peace and also can excel in our academics both at the same time? Kajal sir. I think, uh, again, altruism, the very purpose of your education, study, is serving to other, uh, largely serving to humanity. And then you get more enthusiasm, or more effort, the, no sort of feeling of tiredness come. Just think yourself, and then uh, tiredness certainly come. Okay. As written in the second verse, it's mentioned to consider yourself lowest, but we are told not to consider yourself uh, lower than others at home. By considering yourself low, aren't we uh, demoralizing ourselves? So, so, so there's no way you can feel demoralized when you see yourself as being the lowest because this is done from within the practice of altruism. You know, um, considering others to be more, um, um, cherishing others over oneself alone. Hmm? Sufficient. And 
social member of Debbie, you demoralize you. Yes. But if you remain selfish, then, uh, you know, when you actually do think of yourself as being the lowest, that's actually demoralizing yourself. Uh, amidst all the ensuing chaos in the world, which stories, moments does His Holiness revisit to instill faith in humanity again? As I mentioned earlier, you see, everybody wants a happy life and lack of knowledge. What is the destroyer of unhappiness? What is the destroyer of happiness? And what is the ultimate source of happiness? You see, this, I think, lack of knowledge. So sometimes you see, feel because of frustration. This is also conducting something to the mathematic generation. Yes. So basically, um, uh, the, the, what this shows is that uh, you uh, lack understanding so, okay, of okay. the working of our think, emotions, okay. our minds. Okay, okay. No, I think, please, okay. No, okay, okay. Okay, okay, no problem. No problem. Hmm? Yes? Uh, what could be the reasons for the prevalence of depression and anxiety among school students? Uh, now, I think you should, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the self-centered attitude uh, and lack of knowledge about the whole emotion system. That's the main reason. So, study. I think at least the Shantar Dewa's book is very helpful. Hmm. Should the young preserve their traditions or embrace modern culture? Karsa. I think, as I already mentioned, combination. The education which come from the West is no knowledge about emotion, these things. Uh, so, uh, the existing Western education, existing education which come from the West, the, the certain field uh, not sort of sufficient or not mentioned. So, in that, the India's sort of thousand year old tradition. Should the Soviet? So we should actually be able to add India's uh, in ancient knowledge. Okay. Um, how important is meditation for the young today? Uh, I think it is quite, I think, relevant. Uh, at least in morning. The, the class session start. I think few moments just to remain silent and think about mind. They're quite useful. Um, were your personal challenges as a teenager close to the ones we face today? I think variety. That's also the Muyunizudha. Come the motion, the Nazoro, this shall be covered. So it's difficult to say uh, definitely um, as it seems because uh, you know, things depend on your own circumstances and your own mentality, mental disposition, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, why is the Guru important? Karsa. Oh. Huh? Uh, 
as um, Master Tsongkhapa in his great treatise on the um, stages of the path says, um, one who is someone who wishes, I mean, who wants to actually discipline others must first be able to discipline himself or herself because there is no way without disciplining yourself first you, I mean, uh, you can actually discipline others, control others' emotions and so forth. And then uh, when it comes to um, uh, called, uh, explaining about guru devotion or you know, uh, reliance on guru, um, there are ten different criteria that are mentioned in the Mahayana Sutra Alamkara and one of them is um, that of compassion. Um, uh, affectionate love or compassion. And so this um, uh, quality is very important in a teacher. What, according to you, is happiness? Karsa. I think two, two levels. One, physical level, uh, joyfulness. At the mental level, the mental level is more more important. Uh, mental level, happy, joyful, the physical pain, not much important, not much sort of effect. Other hand, physical, very comfortable, very happy life, but mentally too much disturbances. Uh, that a person is cannot call happy person. So mental level, much more important. Okay. Uh, Your Holiness, children want to know, how did you escape from Tibet? Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> hmm? Firstly, you should know, uh, nine years I spent with the Chinese communists. And in uh, 1954, I went to China. I developed very close relations with Chairman Mao Zedong and many uh, party members. I really admire those Communist Party members, truly dedicated, serving people. Wonderful. The, then eventually, I think power spoiled them. Uh, and then people who have power, then they law, no independent law. So, one of my friend, actually the late president of Israel, Kasa, Shimon Peres. He very socialist. So he very sympathetic towards Chinese in early period. And then later, one occasion I met him and I asked him, do you think now China is socialist? He immediately said, no. What's the kind of capitalism? <laughs> so in any way, the, uh, the worst thing is no freedom. <laughs> no free press. Uh, so people in China, that's the only one information. The party is sort of, what should they, because the propaganda, like that. So then finally, even if my life is facing some danger, then I escaped. 1959, uh, then the march, uh, sort of cry, because the entire class of people I say, I saw the come to Nobilinga and shouting. So then next, uh, uh, then the march, then the march till 17th, I try my best to cool down the situation, but fail. Then 17th, I decided, uh, for the leaving Lhasa. So the last moment, a Chinese, the local leader, asked me, uh, they want to know the place where I stay. There are a few blocks, Nobilinga. So they 
they want to know the place they should mark uh, and they will project no so when we received that letter they either truly target or project to no no the last uh, seven, nine, nine years very difficult eventually since 1956 much sort of suppression in eastern tibet so number of us uh, the spiritual leaders and also local local sort of leaders many killed like that so therefore then when they when i received that sort of us uh, the uh, message so doubt whether so it clearly shows they going to suppress or or military action so then 17 morning i decide leaving now and also you see, i carry some was a mysterious ways to investigation so then all the same sort of indication should go should leave like that okay uh, how do you overcome grief kasa ka hmm but also died <laughs> and nagarjuna the old days you say dead it's nature the whole galaxy is come and disappear uh, so someone this is past there is quite nature hmm what is self enlightenment in your view ka sa self enlightenment ka self care self care like check the actually i got my own little experience uh, as i mentioned earlier several decades i practice shinyada uh wisdom level and altruism om hartness uh i feel chik uh lamga sun chongsun chedya ke Tolong to watch the yalligi resosto. So um through my practice over the last 70 plus years um I um, I feel that um, perhaps I may be somewhere close to uh, what is known as the path of accumulation within this five tiered path <laughs> system. Kada taya ta gade gade para gade para samgal bodhi sosa de age tolong yo ya chikle be sosto. And so um if we relate the 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 five tiered path to the, the mantra of uh, the heart sutra which says gati gati paragati parasamgati and then bodhi swaha so there are five different uh, paths that are um, called um uh, called the, the, that these mantras refer to so i feel uh, i may be uh, somewhere near this first gati which is a reference um, which um, called um is referred by the path of um, accumulation then uh, so this is the last question is it good to be just a normal human being or one should be very nationalistic nationalistic no hmm? i think uh, they that's also nationalistic sometimes for a nella moro kanisto wa samro busu to go yan do da chi gim guru ba ta ya me so so ta miri di me jum jin de ba chi da te ni chi ta to ya ko ne di she ya ja ta sang ta chi ndu yin guru so uh, to be nationalistic also um you need to actually check within yourself whether this nationalistic uh, you know attitude um happens within a set of mind which is very narrow minded or um or not i mean short sighted and so forth or not if that is the case then that's not a good thing to do 
Um, whereas if you actually see the, um, the um, constructive nature of being nationalistic and uh, thinking that you're um, the people of India or your own country, um, um, if you are able to do something for them or to protect them and so forth is some, a good reason if you see a good reason for that, then um, you can be nationalist, which may be uh, considered as a constructive one. Yes. So, um, in the practice of nationalism, um, if you actually tend to uh, be kind of a biased you know, where you hold your side to be better and then wish to overcome or destroy the other side, then that's not good. Okay.